Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari 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 Kopijana Vallabha Giri Varun 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 Hari Yashoda Nandanam Brajajana Randana Shura Nandana, Padajana Randana, Yashura Nandana, Padajana Randana, Yashura Nandana, Padajana Randana, Yamuna Tira Vanachari, Yamuna Tira Vanachari, Yamuna Tira Vanachari, Yamuna Tira Vanachari. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari 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 Jaya Mr. Pad Paramahansa Paravijaka Charja Astoto the Shishi Mata Divine Grace Srila A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupad Ki Jai Iskan BBT Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupad Ki Jai Jai Mishnu Pad Paramahansa Parujaka Acharya Astoto the Shishi Mata Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Ananda Koti Vaishnava Ki Jai Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Samaveda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 On this 23rd day of March 2020 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is. <coughs> Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are in chapter 11, entitled The Universal Form, text 47, <clears throat> page 492. Shri Bhagavan Vacha, Shri Bhagavan Vacha, Maya, Maya Pasanne Natabhajunedam, Maya Pasanne Natabhajunedam, Rupam Param Darshitam Atma Yogat, Rupam Param Darshitam Atma Yogat, Tejo Mayam Vishamanantam Adyam, Tejo Mayam Vishamanantam Adyam, Yan Maitra Dhanyena Najushta Purvam, Yan Maitra Dhanyena Najushta Purvam. Shri Bhagavan Vacha, Maya Pasanne Natabhajunedam, Maya Pasanne Natabhajunedam, Rupam Param Darshitam Atma Yogat, Rupam Param Darshitam Atma Yoga Tejo Mayam Vishamananta Madhyam Tejo Mayam Vishamananta Madhyam Yan Maitra Dhanyena Nadrishta Purvam Yan Maitra Dhanyena Nadrishta Purvam Shri Bhagavan Vacha Shri Bhagavan Vacha Maya Pasanne Natabhajunedam Maya Pasanne Natabhajunedam Rupam Param Darshitam Atma Yoga Rupam Param Darshita Matma Yoga Tejo Mayam Vishamananta Madhyam Tejo Mayam Vishamananta Madhyam Yan Maitra Dhanyena Nadrishta Purvam Yan Maitra Dhanyena Nadrishta Purvam 
word by, word by word meanings. Sri Bhagavan Vacha, the Supreme Personality of God, had said, Maya, by me, Pasannena, happily, Tava, unto you, Arjuna, O Arjun, Idam, this, Rupam, form, Param, transcendental, Darshitam, shown, Atma Yogat, by my internal potency, Tejak Mayam, full of effulgence, Vishram, the entire universe, Anantam, unlimited, Adyam, original, Yat, that which, May, my, Tvat Anjena, besides you, not Drishta Purvam, no one has previously seen. Translation The Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjun, happily have I shown you by my internal potency this supreme universal form within the material world. No one before you has ever seen this primal form, unlimited and full of glaring effulgence. Purport. Arjun wanted to see the universal form of the Lord, so Lord Krishna, out of his mercy upon his devotee Arjun, showed his universal form full of effulgence and opulence. This form was glaring like the sun, and its many faces were rapidly changing. Krishna showed this form just to satisfy the desire of his friend Arjun. This form is manifested by Krishna through his internal potency, which is inconceivable by human speculation. No one had seen this universal form of the Lord before Arjun, but because the form was shown to Arjun, other devotees in the heavenly planets and in other, in other planets in outer space could also see it. They had not seen it before, but because of Arjun, they were able to see it. In other words, all the disciplic devotees of the Lord could see the universal form which was shown to Arjun by the mercy of Krishna. Someone has commented that this form was shown to Duryodhana also when Krishna went to Duryodhana to negotiate for peace. Unfortunately, Duryodhana did not accept the peace offer, but at that time, Krishna manifested some of his universal forms. But those forms are different from this one shown to Arjuna. It is clearly said that no one had ever seen this form before. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmiratam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Shri Dapambad, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So, Krishna is now uh, reestablishing some of that intimate, friendly relationship that he had with Arjun. Uh, it was kind of strained when he showed the universal form, and then Arjun finally said that it is very frightening, and he asked Krishna to show his uh, other form. So please, 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 uh, your grace upon me, please bestow your grace upon me and reveal again your form as the personality of Godhead, O Lord of Lords. So he's now doing that, at first forearm form, and then he'll show him his uh, two-arm form. But here the word prasanena means uh, happily. In other words, it was because of Arjuna's devotion and because of his special request that Krishna showed this magnificent, all-encompassing, uh, wondrous and frightening form to Arjuna. And we remember that uh, when Arjuna asked, who are you? Krishna, uh, Krishna said, I am time. And time is uh, a, a form of Krishna that we can all experience and uh, feel the power of time pushing us forward. Uh, time develops everything, but it also destroys everything. And that destructive power is what Krishna is describing here uh, a few verses back. And he reveals to Arjuna that his whole idea that he would leave the battlefield and somehow uh, avoid the death of his uh, beloved uh, instructor, uh, 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 instructor, and and uh, Bhishma and Bhima, excuse me, Bhishma Dev uh, was. Uh, will be foiled because he showed that they will be killed also on the battlefield, that that was Krishna's plan. So this is also important for Arjun's uh, realizing that uh, his original uh, impetus or his original impulse to leave the battlefield and avoid the death of his friends and his beloved uh, uh, relatives uh, will be, uh, is, is really foolish because already they're being, they're, they will be killed as is Krishna's plan. Uh, Happily, I've shown you by my internal potency. So Prabhupada explains in this purport how that internal potency is inconceivable to us. 
we really have no access to it as long as we're bewildered by the external potency and we're putting all of our attention and our efforts in uh, exploiting and enjoying this material energy. So that's the ultimate instruction of the Bhagavad Gita, to turn our attention completely to Krishna, surrender unto him, and uh, reverse the process or finally negate that uh, turning away that's been uh, keeping us away from Krishna since time immemorial. Okay, and here he explains that this, was, uh, this, fo this uh, form that he showed to Arjun, there were different varieties of the universal form. Uh, we read about the Vishwarupa in the beginning of the second canto also, how uh, this is a way in which uh, it's a, the first step in God realization to begin to see the whole world as uh, Krishna's energy or even uh, the external body of the Lord in a sense. The, uh, the sun and the moon are the eyes, the rivers are the veins, the mountains are the bones, and the patala loka is the feet, and like that. And so in this way, uh, as we go through our ordinary course of our day, we can see Krishna everywhere. We can see God everywhere through his uh, universal form, his manifestation. It's almost like proper once in one purpose, he calls it like an external body of Krishna. And uh, this universal form, it's... As, as ex explicitly mentioned there in the second canto, it's an imaginary form, but it's still a form that can help us to uh, move toward seeing God everywhere and everything. Uh, this universal form is a little different that Arjun saw, um, but in either case, it's not a form that devotees really want to dwell on permanently because you can't have an intimate, loving relationship with that form. Here we see the mood that Arjun uh, uh, it's finally fixed in is wonder and trepidation and uh, it's not, it's not uh, his natural mood of sakya ras that he has with Krishna. Okay, going on, text 48. Na veda yagya dhyana na dana na chakriyadbi na tapobir ugrai evam rupa shakya maham nirloke drashtam tradanhi na kuru pravira O oh, best of the Kuru warriors, no one before you has ever seen this universal form of mine. For neither by studying the Vedas, nor by performing sacrifices, nor by charity, nor by pious activities, nor by severe penances, can I be seen in this form in the material world. Purport. The divine vision in this connection should be clearly understood. Who can have divine vision? Divine means godly. Unless one attains the status of divinity as a demigod, he cannot have divine vision. And what is a demigod? It is stated in the Vedic scriptures that those who are devotees of Lord Vishnu are demigods. Vishnu, Bhakto, Smito, Smito, Deva. Those who are atheistic, that is, who do not believe in Vishnu, or who recognize only the impersonal part of Krishna as the Supreme, cannot have the divine vision. It is not possible to decry Krishna and at the same time have the divine vision. One cannot have the divine vision without becoming divine. In other words, those who have divine vision can also see like Arjun. The Bhagavad Gita gives the description of the universal form. Although this description was unknown to everyone before Krishna and before Arjun, now one can have some idea of the Vishwarup after this incident. Those who are actually divine can see the universal form of the Lord. But one cannot be divine without being a pure devotee of Krishna. The devotees, however, who are actually in the divine nature and who have divine vision are not very much interested in seeing the universal form of the Lord. As described in the previous verse, Arjuna desired to see the four-handed form of Lord Krishna as Vishnu, and he was actually afraid of the universal form. In this verse, there are some significant words, just like Veda Yajna Jayanai, which refers to studying Vedic literature and the subject matter of sacrificial regulations. Veda refers to all kinds of Vedic literature, such as the four Vedas, Rig, Yajur, Sama, and Atarva, and the 18 Puranas, the Upanishads, and the Vedanta Sutra. One can study these at home or anywhere else. Similarly, there are sutras, Kalpa Sutras and Mimamsa Sutras, for studying the method of sacrifice. Dana refers to charity, which is offered to a suitable party. 
such as those who are engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, the Brahmins and Vaishnavas. Similarly, pious activities refers to the Agni Hocha and the prescribed duties of the different castes. And the voluntary acceptance of some bodily pains is called tapasya. So one can perform all these, can accept bodily penances, give charity, study the Vedas, etc. But unless one is a devotee like Arjun, it is not possible to see that universal form. Those who are impersonalists are also imagining that they are seeing the universal form of the Lord. But from the Bhagavad Gita, we understand that the impersonalists are not devotees. Therefore, they are unable to see the universal form of the Lord. There are many persons who create incarnations. They falsely claim an ordinary human to be an incarnation, but this is all foolishness. We should follow the principles of the Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, there is no possibility of attaining perfect spiritual knowledge. <clears throat> Although the Bhagavad Gita is considered the preliminary study of the science of God, still it is so perfect that it enables one to distinguish what is what. The followers of a pseudo-incarnation may say that they have also seen the transcendental incarnation of God, the universal form. But that is unacceptable because it is clearly stated here that unless one becomes a devotee of Krishna, one cannot see the universal form of God. So one first of all has to become a pure devotee of Krishna. Then he can claim that he can show the universal form of, of what he has seen. A devotee of Krishna cannot accept false incarnations or followers of false incarnations. So again, Krishna says, no one before he has ever seen this universal form. And then he gives uh, various, a list here of activities in the Vedic culture that people uh, engage in for various motives, uh, purification, uh, expiation of sin, uh, rising to other planets, uh, mostly to get uh, a better birth or go to heaven, uh, all of these different things. But if there's no bhakti in them, then Krishna reserves the right of not revealing his, uh, any, any form that one can see. You're not, you have to be, become divine. You have to get the divine vision. And as he says earlier, naham prakasha sarvasa yoga maya samavrata. I'm not visible to all. I'm not manifest to all. I'm covered by my maya potency. So people are deluded. And what's that delusion? There's no God, or everyone is God. Or God is, everything is God. Uh, anything, anything but I have to surrender to God. This is the, the idea, is to uh, somehow avoid that, which is the original sin, the original mistake of the living entity to uh, compete with Krishna. So uh, now it's interesting because here are all these ways in which one cannot see the universal form and only the devotee can see the universal form, but ultimately Prabhupada says the devotee is not very, very much interested in seeing the universal form. <laughs> So the, 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 when you read the uh, Bhagavatam and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you realize that uh, when it comes to bhakti, the, the only form that devotees really get interested in uh, is the personal form of Krishna. And of course, in our line, it's um, almost exclusively Krishna's uh, threefold bending form in Vrindavan playing the flute and uh, that original form. Ete chanshakala pungsa Krishna stu Bhagavan swayam. Krishna... Uh, especially Vrindavan Krishna, uh, is the, uh, he, is, he is really Bhagavan, and all others are expansions of Krishna, displaying uh, a portion of his uh, six opulences, which he has in full. So that's really the form that devotees long to see. There are so many uh, verses, uh, so many expressions of uh, high, high, uh, highly advanced pure devotees longing to see that a form of Krishna. Uh, I mean, it comes to mind in the Anjali that there's so many beautiful verses quoted from Vidagda Madhava, Lalita Madhava, uh, uh, expressing that, that um, mood of separation, along to see Krishna. Uh, what does it say? Kwananda kula chanda ma, kuchik chanda karan kuti, kwamanda murali rava, kwanusurindra nila duti. So this is one verse from Vedagda Madhava where uh, I think it's Radharani. Radharani is expressing this. Where is he? Uh, where is that Krishna who was risen like the moon in the dynasty of Nanda Maharaj? 
uh, who has a beautiful peacock plume on his head, whereas he who plays such wonderful uh, enchanting melodies on the flute, uh, who has a complexion like a sapphire, uh, rasa that's a ton to be. Where is that dancer, beautiful dancer in the rasa dance? Oh, friend, where is he who is the because uh, he the, the the remedy for my heart disease, as it were, rakshaushadir, nidhi mama, my treasure, and mama suritama kvabatahanda hadik bidin, I am condemned because of his absence. So this is this is the the uh, essential central mood of uh, Lord Chaitanya is that uh, in separation he expressed that in the, uh, so many years and he was in uh, Jagannath Puri uh, with his intimate associates there. And that's the, that's the form that they all want to see. That's the form that, and the mood of separation from Krishna which produces uh, the most intense uh, emotion of love for him. And that we find that coming also from Madhavendra Puri. So, but this idea of wanting to see Krishna, this is what uh, Srila Prabhupada explained. The, the temples are set up in order to give one a sense. You know, come together in the morning, early in the morning you see the beautiful form of the Lord, uh, Mangalarti, and then the curtains close and you chant the japa and you try to remember that form. You want to see the form, then the curtains open again at the greeting and there's Krishna in his beautiful uh, full regalia. Uh, with, you know, with his wonderful, charming, smiling face greeting you, and you get another chance to, to absorb the mind in gazing at that form, offering prayers, and, and chanting the holy name. And then uh, eventually you have to go out and, and do your duties, but you're always thinking, when will I see that form again? Re- try to remember that, that uh, vision of Krishna, and then come together in the evening and see the deities once again. And the whole idea is to impress that uh, vision of Krishna in one's mind, and during the day, if you're, you know, a full-time devotee, or if even if trying to be uh, advanced, it, and trying to remember that form and remember Krishna in your daily activities, and the whole idea is to is to uh, purify our desires, uh, wanting to see and experience things that are simply uh, phantasmagory of Krishna's ma- maternal energy, and reflect just a tiny spark of his splendor. We want to see the original splendorous form of Krishna and return to the spiritual world. And so we have to develop the desire to do it. That's the famous verse Prabhupada says, this is where the term Krishna consciousness comes from. Krishna bhakti rasa bhavitam ati kriyatam hitikritopi labhite tattalaulim abhimulli mekalam janma koti sukutayana labhite. The, the uh, experience of Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavi Tamati, having one's mind uh, absorbed in Krishna Bhakti Rasa, in, in the relationship of, of love with Krishna, is the most precious thing you can have. And if you find some place to buy it, you should buy it. Uh, he says, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Kriyatam Yadi Kutopi Labhite. Uh, you should purchase it. But the price is your greed for it, is your desire. And attaining that desire is what uh, bhakti yoga is all about, sadhana bhakti. The Prabhupada explains at the end of the third chapter how this uh, kama, this, this strong desire to enjoy sense gratification in this material world headed by sex desire is simply the perverted reflection of the prema that we, is, our, is our original mood in the spiritual world. But having turned away from Krishna and put our attention on the material world and come here, uh, all of that desire is being expressed through matter, and it just produces suffering uh, in, in, within one lifetime and, be, and, and the, the big sufferings of birth and death, old age and disease. Uh, so, so that uh, desire, that karma, that attraction, uh, has to be redirected toward Krishna, Krishna's devotees, everything related to Krishna, Krishna's service, glorification of Krishna, Krishna prasadam, everything related directly to Krishna, and that purification is what sadhana bhakti is all about. And, it, and the culmination is there, the advancement is there, the more you desire to serve Krishna with all your senses, to see him, to glorify him, to hear about him, to, to uh, serve him in various ways, and to serve his devotees. Um, that's most pleasing to Krishna, even more pleasing than serving him directly. So since everyone is devotee, well, when you bring one person closer to Krishna, by uh, preaching, uh, that's the most uh, pleasing service to Krishna. And what's the, what's the result? Well, how do you experience it? 
a waning of the desire to enjoy sense gratification and an awakening of the desire to serve Krishna and to see Krishna and hear about Krishna and the taste. I was just hearing a lecture where Prabhupada was uh, speaking on those verses in the, in the second chapter, the first canto, where he's uh, describing you know, it, the, whole, the whole progression. It, be, it begins with Varna Ashram, and the basic uh, instruction there is that, all, that uh, the whole point of dharma is to induce uh, bhakti, pure bhakti, which is un, un, uh, uh, interrupted and no material motivation. Uh, so that's what human life is all about, about inquiring into the absolute and not for sense gratification and uh, understanding Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan and uh, try, trying to cultivate our natural devotion for Krishna. But it's all built around hearing and chanting. And how do you get that taste for hearing and chanting so you can absorb your mind by serving the Guru? Shushusho, Shadadhanasya, Vasudeva, Kataruchi, Syan. Syan comes into being. What? Vasudeva, Kataruchi, the uh, taste for Krishna Kata, for sound vibration that directly describes Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastimes, and instructions, and service. And uh, so by, when you get that taste, then it becomes like a sword that cuts the knot of these material desires. And your heart becomes free of the material desires and naturally expresses toward Krishna uh, the, uh, the, the natural bhakti and love that's there. And then at the end of the, the progression, he describes Krishna's role. When, when, when we have that taste, Shindutam Sukata Krishna Punyashavana Kirtana, that Krishna within the heart, when he understands that the soul is hearing him with, with, with great attention and ardor, then he cleanses away all the inartas in the heart. But uh, before they're completely cleansed away, nashta prayeshu, abadreshu, uh, when they're almost destroyed, the percentage is destroyed, then one becomes firmly fixed in devotion. Uh, by regularly serving the Srimad Bhagavatam through hearing and chanting and distributing and by serving the Mahabhagavat, the great devotee. Uh, one comes to the Nishta platform and then the taste increases more and more from there. Uh, nishta and then Ruchi and Asakti and Bhava and Prema. And so it's described in the last couple of verses in the series how uh, the modes of passion and ignorance are transcended, one becomes fixed in goodness, in the impure goodness, and even basanna manaso bhagavad bhakti yogataha, one, one's natural state of joy, of ananda, starts to manifest as basanna, uh, even basanna, uh, basanna manaso bhagavad bhakti yogata by the process of devotional service. Bhagavad tattva vijnanam, one gets direct uh, experience. Krishna reveals more and more of his. Uh, uh, reality, his qualities and his manifestations in the heart and externally. And then finally, all the knots in the heart are cut asunder, the material knots, and the uh, doubts are destroyed, and the karma is destroyed, and one sees oneself, and one sees Krishna in the heart. So that's uh, uh, what the, the devotees are eager for. So this Bhagavad Gita is, is Prabhupada says preliminary, but it's, uh, it's complete in itself. There's, there's a summary of everything here. And so now Krishna will describe how he is not going to continue Arjuna's distress here. And so he's going to reveal his uh, more human-like form, four-handed and finally two-handed. Ma vevita ma chavimud habavo dhishtrahu pam gordam idrin mamedam Kapeta bi prita manapunastvam tadeva meru pamidam papasya. O Arjun, you have been perturbed and bewildered by seeing this horrible feature of mine. Now let it be finished. My devotee, be free from all disturbances. With a, with a peaceful mind, you can now see the form you desire. Purport. In the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, Arjun was worried about killing Bhishma and Drona, his worshipful grandfather and master. But Krishna said that he need not be afraid of killing his grandfather. When the sons of Dhritarashtra tried to disrobe Jopadi in the assembly of the Kurus, Bhishma and Jonah were silent, and for such negligence of duty, 
they should be killed. Krishna showed his universal form to Arjun just to show him that these people were already killed for their unlawful action. That scene was shown to Arjun because devotees are always peaceful and they cannot perform such horrible actions. The purpose of the revelation of the universal form was shown. Now Arjun wanted to see the forearmed form, and Krishna showed him. A devotee is not much interested in the universal form, for it does not enable one to reciprocate loving feelings. Either a devotee wants to offer his respectful, worshipful feelings, or he wants to see the two-handed form, Krishna form so that he can reciprocate in loving service with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Prabhupada gives a little insight here about why Dronacharya and Bhishma uh, will be killed. Of course, we read of the glorious uh, death of Bhishma Dev in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, even though he, he, he did die on that battlefield, it was the most glorious death where he had the benediction from his father that he wouldn't be killed or wouldn't die unless he decided to die. So he's lying on this bed of arrows. means the arrows were shot through, but he still wasn't dying because he wanted to see Krishna at that last moment. So Krishna came there with all kinds of sages. Arjuna was there. He was very thirsty. He shot an arrow in the ground, and the Ganges came up so he could drink something. And then for a long time, he instructed Yudhishthir. First of all, he pacified Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir was heartbroken and, 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 uh, and, uh, about all the, 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 the death and the massive, probably calls it a massive massacre that had occurred. Not just the the soldiers, but also the elephants and the, 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 the uh, horses that were slain. You can imagine the scene there on the battlefield after it was all over. So Yudhishthir was disconsolate. He said, all, all because of me and my desire for this kingdom. Now look and see all of this horrible thing. He says, I'll have to dwell in hell forever. I don't think I'll ever be able to get out of hell for this sin. So he, was, he couldn't be consoled. So he came there and Bhishma Dev was there and Bhishma Dev spoke to him and consoled him and said, no, you should take the kingdom. This was Krishna's plan. It's your duty. And then he instructed him in all kinds of things. It's in the Mahabharata, Bhishma Parva. So, but then the final t the time came. This is, the Bhagavatam emphasizes this. And he had these beautiful prayers. Uh, and don't forget, he's a Mahajan. So these prayers are very instructive. Uh, and I remember a couple of them near the beginning. He says, Chubavana Kamanam, Tamala Varnam, Rabakata Gold of Arambaran Tadani, Papalada Kukulavatan, and Amjam Bidya Sakira to Dustumi in the Buddha. So he's gazing at Krishna's beautiful lotus face. Krishna didn't say anything. He could have instructed Yudhishthira, but he wanted Bhishma to get the honor and to exalt his, his pure devotee. So then finally the moment came, the most auspicious moment for his departure, astrologically, and then he started the beautiful prayers in this special meter, which I like to call Bhishma meter. It's not unique to him, but he uses it. And Tribhavanna Kamanam, he's looking at Krishna, Tribhavanna Kamanam, Tamalavanam. Now he's looking, he's looking at Krishna, he's Tribhavanna uh, Kamanam, in the most attractive in all three worlds. It has the color of a tamal tree. Ravikata gold of Arambadang Dadhane Vapur. On his body, he's wearing these beautiful silken garments that shine like the reddish rising sun. Uh, Ravikata. Ravikata means the sun, sun rays. Gold, gold, gold. Ravikata gold of Arambadang Dadhane Vapur. Alakakurla Vatan. And his lotus face is framed by these beautiful curling uh, locks of hair. Vijayasake. Uh, uh, he's the friend of the victor. The word Vijay or Vijay. It means the victor, Arjun, the friend of Arjun, Vijayasake, Ratarastume in the Vajya, let my love be drawn to him and, and with exclusively. So this is a lot of his prayers are end in that, that, that sentiment. So uh, this is beautiful prayers at the end, and then he left and went back to Krishna Loka. So this is, uh, you know, Arjun uh, didn't want to be responsible for killing him, but it was the most glorious death. And, of course, nobody dies. He didn't really die. He just went to his, a better place. So this is the... Uh, uh, but here, are, you know, Krishna is saying, now with a peaceful mind, enough with this universal form. I see you've been perturbed by it. And so he shows the forearm form, and then it describes he shows the two-hand form, which they have time. We'll read that. Sanjayu vacha ityarjanam vasudevastatokpa svakam rupam darshayama sabhuyaha Sanjay said to Dhritarashtra, 
The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, having spoken thus to Arjuna, displayed his real four-armed form and at last showed his two-armed form, thus encouraging the fearful Arjuna. That two-armed form is the Saumya Vapur. Saumya Vapur, the most beautiful form. Purport. When Krishna appeared as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, he first of all appeared as four-armed Narayan. But when he was requested by his parents, he transformed himself into an ordinary child in appearance. Similarly, Krishna knew that Arjuna was not interested in seeing the four-handed form, but since Arjuna asked to see this four-handed form, Krishna also showed him this form again, and then showed himself in his two-handed form. The word Saumyavapu is very significant. Saumyavapu is a very beautiful form. It is known as the most beautiful form. When he, Krishna, was present, everyone was attracted simply by Krishna's form and became and because Krishna is the director of the universe, he just banished the fear of Arjuna, his devotee, and showed him again his beautiful form of Krishna. In the Brahma Samhita 538, it is stated, Preman janatudita bhakti vilochanena. Only a person whose eyes are smeared with the ointment of love can see the beautiful form of Sri Krishna. So this uh, is a constant theme in this chapter, getting the eyes to see the universal form, those who don't have the proper uh, vision, the qualifications cannot see the form. So this is the quintessential verse about uh, being able to see Krishna in his real form through the uh, eyes that have been smeared with love. Preman janachari da bhakti velochanena santa sadaiva vridayeshu bilokayanti yang shyama sundaram achintya gunaswarupam Govindamadi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. So acquiring those uh, Premanjan, Premanjan is the ointment of Prema. Uh, if one's eyes are smeared with that ointment, then he can see Krishna within and without, but especially mentions within the heart. Bhakti Velochanena Sanda, the saints, the devotees, Sadaiva Vidyeshu, they always see within their heart that beautiful Shaima Sundar form playing his flute and engaging in his pastime. A chinchu guna sarupa, an inconceivable, wonderful qualities. Uh, so that's the goal of the devotees. Uh, that's the form they want to see. And uh, if they long for it and really want to see it and, and are able to purify themselves through a serious bhakti, then Krishna is uh, eager to show that form to him. The whole the Krishna Kanamrita, a lot of it is this building up of the desire to see Krishna and Krishna's actual revelation to Bilva Mangal Thakur. I remember reading that uh, second chapter of Madhya Leela many years ago, when it first, before it first came out, actually. And uh, it was, it's a little mini Anja Leela there. Uh, the Krishna's coverage says at the beginning of the chapter, my, basically says that my health is failing. I don't know if I'll be able to really finish. So I, I want to give the devotees some taste of this Anja Leela, which really was one of the main reasons he undertook to write the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The devotees were so eager to to have that final Leela uh, written. They had the Chaitanya Bhagavat, but there wasn't much about the Anti Leela. Uh, so uh, he gives a little taste of that mood of the Anti Leela there. And there's a section where he quotes from the Karnamrita. He Deva, He Dayata, He Bhavanaka, Bandho, He Krishna, He Chapala, He Kadonaika Sindhu, He Nata, He Ramana, He Nayana, Virama, Ha Ha Kadana, Bhavitasi, Padandrishorme. So that last line says, alas, alas, when will you be visible to my eyes? So he described, hey Deva, oh Lord, oh beloved, uh, hey Deva, hey Deva, hey Bhavanayaka Bandho, oh only friend of the universe, universe, hey Krishna, hey Chapala, oh restless one, oh Krishna, hey Kadonaika Sindho, uh, only, only ocean of mercy for this world. Hey Nata, hey Ramana, oh my master, oh my lover, Ram, Ramana, hey Ramana, hey Nayana Birama. Oh, uh, the lighter of my eyes. Ha, ha, alas, alas, kadanu, when, uh, when, kadanu bhavitasi padhangdrishorme, will you pass before the path of my eyes? That, I think. And, then, and then the next verse, uh, I think it's the next verse, or the next Sanskrit verse quoted from the Krishna Karnamata, is he sees, in Krishna, madak swayam nu madaradu de mandalam nu madhu yameva nu manona yanamatam. It, is this he? This must be he, Cupid personified. Madhura Duti Mandalam Nu, who's uh, surrounded by an aura of the greatest sweetness and like that. 
uh, he's come before me. So this is the classic you know, expression of the separation and the meeting, the, the longing and then the revelation, which uh, makes up so much of Krishna's pastimes. When you think about it, what's going on daily in Goloka Vrindavan? Uh, Krishna gets up, and uh, you know the the, uh, the coward boys. He goes he goes to milk the cows, and the cow comes back. The coward boys are dressing him. The gopis are uh, cooking breakfast, and uh, you know. And then he off he goes to the forest, and they're pining away at home all day, you know, waiting for him to return. When is he coming back? Thinking about him, singing about him. And then uh, in, the, in the evening, Mother Yashoda gets up on top of the house, and there's this little fenced area where she can look far out, you know, and is that the dust, the dust from the cows? Oh, look, there's the dust, and then they hear the flute. There's a whole ashtaka just describing uh, Krishna's return. And that's a daily affair, the separation and the meeting, and then the, the jubilation as they hear the flute, and Krishna comes into the, into the town. And, you know, then the nighttime pastimes, they sneak out, you know, in the meeting. So a lot of it is the separation meeting, see, seeing and not seeing. And, of course, the not seeing just means that the vision goes within the heart. They're seeing even, even more. So that's, uh, in, in a little bit here, it's reflected there uh, in this chapter. Arjun wanted to see the certain form of Krishna. He was given the form, uh, the vision, but that form wasn't really so attractive. So now he's going to uh, see this uh, Saumya Vapu, and Arjun is going to express his appreciation. All right, let's go on. Uh, Arjun Vacha. Jushtredam manusham rupam tavasaumyam janardana idanim asmi samvritta sacheta pakatim gataha. When Arjuna thus saw Krishna in his original form, he said, O Janardan, seeing this human like form so very beautiful, I am now composed in mind and I am restored to my original nature. Purport. Here the words manusham rupam clearly indicate the Supreme Personality of God to be originally two handed. Those who deride Krishna as if he were an ordinary person are shown here to be ignorant of his divine nature. If Krishna is like an ordinary human being, then how is it possible for him to show the universal form and again to show the four-handed Narayan form? So it is very clearly stated in the Bhagavad Gita that one who thinks that Krishna is an ordinary person and who misguides the reader by claiming that it is the impersonal Brahman within Krishna speaking, speaking is doing the greatest injustice. Krishna has actually shown his universal form and his four-handed Vishnu form. So how can he be an ordinary human being? A pure devotee is not confused by misguiding commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita because he knows what is what. The original verses of the Bhagavad Gita are as clear as the sun. They do not require lamplight from foolish commentators. And knowing well whom Srila Prabhupada is talking about here, this is... Uh, Periodically, I think in this book, there's several um, references to it. Uh, at the end of the ninth chapter, we find this famous verse, Manmana bhavamad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskaru mame vaishasi yukbhavam atmana matparayanaha. Now remember, the, Bhagav the ninth chapter is called the most confidential knowledge, and the most confidential part of that knowledge is given at the very end. We reiterated in the 18th chapter. Krishna says, this is it. This is the most confidential knowledge. Just think of me. Become my devotee. Worship me and bow down to me. And thus, link to me in, in, in bhakti yoga, you will certainly come to me. So the commentary on that verse by Dr. Radhakrishnan, uh, whose Bhagavad Gita I have on my shelf for my work, editorial work. Uh, sure enough, he says it's not to Krishna who we have to surrender to, but it's the unborn, eternal, inconceivable within Krishna. So there's a, there's a story behind that. If you read the... Um, what is it called? Renunciation Through Wisdom Book. Now, how do we come to that title? Vairagya Vidya. Vairagya Vidya translates as Renunciation Through Wisdom. Um, so Prabhupada, uh, apparently, I think this, what happened was that when Prabhupada was in India and he was trying to, you know, he did the League of, the, League of Devotees and so many things, I think he was, yeah, he had already been, he was Vranaprasta at that time. Uh, for a time there, he, he took over the management of one of his godbrother's temples and ashrams. And one of the brahmacharis went out to preach, and he uh, came across Radhakrishnan giving a, a talk, I think, on his Gita. And uh, that he was expressing this idea. 
and was it was expressed in the Bhagavad Gita itself. And he, I think it was he, he an encounter. I may be wrong about that, but I think that's what happened. So Prabhupada was, you know, I think the the, the Brahmachari had objected to that to some degree, and Prabhupada was very happy with that. But but Prabhupada uh, referred to the actual page number in the book, and, and, and the same page number was there in the, in the little paperback that I bought. So I, I looked at it, and he, he went on for quite a few pages refuting it. In other words, it wasn't just a mention, and here he refers to it in passing. But uh, he was, he was, Prabhupada was really uh, exercised, you know, by the, uh, th this very prominent person who had been, I think, a president, the president, you know, for, uh, was, was spreading this ignorance about Krishna Bhakti. So uh, that's why he, he refers to it several times in this, uh, in this book. Uh, that, uh, not by name, but uh, anyone who knows the story, misguised claiming that Krishna is an ordinary person. The idea that there is some difference between Krishna's within and without. This is a very important concept. This is a phrase from one verse, I don't know exactly where it's from, but probably would quote it in this regard. Deha Dehi Vibhago, the difference, Vibhaga, between the Dehi, the, uh, the indweller, and the Deha, does never exist in the Lord. Na Ishwade Vidyate Kuchit. Vidyate sometimes means this is, is known to not exist in this case. So that's, that's we're, we have the difference. That's the first lesson, Deha Dehi. There's a difference between our body and ourself. But not for Krishna. You know, that's, he's absolute. So that's a, a uh, uh, this is a way in which the impersonalists try to uh, admit the existence of Krishna, but that he's not the highest reality, he's that, w that the unborn, absolute, inconceivable Brahman within him is really what we're after. No, it doesn't work that way. The, the Brahman is resting on Krishna, Brahmano Hipatashtaham. That's there at the end of the 14th chapter. So, so this, now, now he's, he's revealed his Saumya Vapu, and now, uh, we don't have time tonight, but tomorrow, these last verses, they're very rich. So much of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, of the importance of this chapter uh, comes in in the last three, ver uh, three or four verses. What are the 52, 54, and 55? These long purports here with a lot of quotes in them. And a lot of these quotes had been lost. They, you know, they couldn't understand the Sanskrit, and they were, re you know, restored. So it's very important to always read the uh, revised edition. Everyone, <laughs> I don't have to, I don't have to tell you. So uh, I think maybe we can just we can read this one fifty-two, and then we'll be, we'll also do fifty-two uh, tomorrow. But we have a few minutes, so we'll do that. Shri uh, Bhagavan Vacha. Sudur darshamidam rupam, Jishtavan asiyan mama, Deva apyas rupasya, Nityam darshanakangshinaha. The Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjun, this form of mine you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form which is so dear. Purport. In the 48th verse of this chapter, Lord Krishna concluded revealing his universal form and informed Arjuna that this form is not possible to be seen by so many pious activities, sacrifices, etc. Now here the word sudur darsham is used, indicating that Krishna's two-handed form is still more confidential. One may be able to see the universal form of Krishna by adding a little tinge of devotional service to various activities like penances, Vedic study, and philosophical speculation. It may be possible. But without a tinge of bhakti, one cannot see. That has already been explained. Still, beyond that universal form, the form of Krishna with two hands is still more difficult to see, even for demigods like Brahma and Lord Shiva. They desire to see him, and we have evidence in the Srimad Bhagavatam that when he was supposed to be in the womb of his mother, Devaki, all the demigods from heaven came to see the marvel of Krishna, and they offered nice prayers to the Lord, although he was not at that time visible to them. They waited to see him. A foolish person may deride him, thinking him an ordinary person, and may offer respect not to him, but to the impersonal something within him. There again, again he's given a slap. That you know who. But these are all nonsensical postures. Krishna in his two-armed form is actually desired to be seen by demigods like Brahman Shiva.
In the Bhagavad Gita, 9.11, it is also confirmed, He is not visible to the foolish persons who deride him. Krishna's body, as confirmed by Brahma Samhita and confirmed by Krishna himself in the Bhagavad Gita, is completely spiritual and full of bliss and eternality. His body is never like a material body, but for some who makes a study of Krishna by reading Bhagavad Gita or similar Vedic scriptures, Krishna is a problem. For one using a material process, Krishna is considered to be a great historical personality and very learned philosopher, but he is an ordinary man. And even though he was so powerful, he had to accept the material body. No, even though he was so powerful, he had to accept the material body. Ultimately, they think that the absolute truth is impersonal. Therefore, they think that from his impersonal feature, he assumed a personal feature attached to material nature. This is a materialistic calculation of the Supreme Lord. Another calculation is speculative. Those who are in search of knowledge, who speculate on Krishna and consider him to be less important than the universal form of the Supreme. Those who are in search of knowledge also speculate on Krishna and consider him to be less important than the universal form of the Supreme. Thus, some think that the universal form of Krishna, which was manifested to Arjuna, is more important than his personal form. According to them, the personal form of the Supreme is something imaginary. They believe that in the ultimate issue, the absolute truth is not a person. But the transcendental process is described in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, to hear about Krishna from authorities. That is the actual Vedic process, and those who are actually in the Vedic line hear about Krishna from authority. And by repeated hearing about him, Krishna becomes dear. As we have several times discussed, Krishna is covered by his yoga maya potency. He is not to be seen or revealed to anyone and everyone. Only by one to whom he reveals himself can he be seen. This is confirmed in the Vedic literature. For one who is surrendered, a surrendered soul, the absolute truth can actually be understood. The transcendentalist, by continuous Krishna consciousness and by devotional service to Krishna, can have his spiritual eyes opened and can see Krishna by revelation. Such a revelation is not possible even for the demigods. Therefore, it is difficult even for the demigods to understand Krishna. And the advanced demigods are always in hope of seeing Krishna in his two-handed form. The conclusion is that although to see the universal form of Krishna is very, very difficult and not possible for anyone and everyone, it is still more difficult to understand his personal form as Shama Sundar. So we may start on 53 or 52. I'm not sure yet. But for now, I think we have to suspend. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. I trust there's several of you out there. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs>